Hello, this is Patricia from patriciafenty.com and today I have a crochet tutorial for this really pretty colorful scarf and this is made using a cotton yarn and so this is more of a fair weather scarf and I think it's just so pretty with all these beautiful punchy colors that uh, cotton yarn is so fabulous for offering. Now to create this scarf pattern you're going to need a total of 10 of these granny squares in this pattern in a variety of colors and I'll show you those uh, in a little bit. And I do have a tutorial on how to crochet this particular granny square pattern and I'll put a link to that below. And for this pattern I'm using the Lily Sugar and Cream Cotton Yarn in number four medium weight and the colors I'm using in this design are the rose pink the mod blue, the hot green, black currant, tangerine, and country red. And then I'm using a four millimeter or G6 crochet hook. You'll need a darning needle and some scissors. So next I'll show you the color combinations. All right. For all the different color combinations, the last round will be done in the mod blue or the teal color. So for this first square, we have the pink, the green, and the tangerine. And they're going to be joined together in this order. So that'll be the first one. Then we have the purple, the tangerine, and the red. And that square will join onto that one. And then we have the green, the purple, and the pink. And then we have the tangerine, the red, and the green and then the last one is the red the pink and the purple and so they'll be joined on in that order and then you'll just repeat the same color sequence for the second set of squares and they'll be all joined together and so then this purple here would then start again over onto this square here and then you just repeat that sequence again. Now what we're going to do is we're going to join the squares together and I'm using this stitch here. It's basically just a chain stitch connection and this is a technique that I borrowed from Irish freeform crochet and it's a way to join motifs together in a way that gives you a nice flat join. And uh, it makes a really nice lacy flat join. And you can see here how that's nice and flat. And for a project like this, I like the fabric to be nice and flat uh, rather than say if you join together with a single crochet, you'll have a raised stitch. And I don't really want that for this particular design. All right, so we'll start joining these squares together. So start by creating a slip knot and using the mod blue. And if you're new to crochet, I do have a beginner crochet series that I'll put in the link below. So you're going to join into your, your first square. This is the second square in the pattern and this is the first square. So you're joining into the first square of the pattern. You'll join into the chain two space with a slip knot or a slip stitch. Now the cotton yarn that the ply is quite loose so um, it can be a little bit tricky to work with. So now you chain three and so this is going to be a little bit tricky this Irish freeform technique um, what you do is you pull the loop uh, and pull your hook out I'm just going to turn it this way and then you go into the chain two space of your adjacent square and you're going to pull the yarn from the back of your work and keeping your chain work facing up the V stitch is facing up and you're just going to do a slip stitch and then you'll chain three
and then turn your work and pull the loop out and turn your work. And you're going to come back down into that chain two space and bring this um, chain into that stitch. And you wanna keep the chain facing up, that's the top of the chain. And so you're gonna just grab that loop and bring that into the chain two space and snug that up and do a slip stitch. There we go. And now we're gonna start the zigzag. So chain three. And turn your work. And pull that loop off. And again, keeping the chain, the V stitch of the chain facing up. And you have your chain two space here. So you're gonna skip two stitches and going into the back loops of the third stitch, you'll pull the yarn through and just like that, again, keeping the chain stitches facing up and do a slip stitch and keep that nice and snug. And then chain three. And, and this is a little bit fussy, but once you get going on it, you'll get the hang of it and you'll just flip your work again. And whether you pull this out before or after you flip, it doesn't matter, just so long as um, when you come around, you keep that top part of the chain facing up. And here's your corner. You'll skip the first stitch and the second stitch and going into the back loops of the third stitch, going under both stitches, you grab your loop and pull that in from behind, snug it up, and do a slip stitch. And then chain three. And pull that out, turn your work. And you know, it, it, it is a bit fussy, but this was what gives you a really nice flat join and that kind of lacy join. So you'll see this is the stitch that you slip stitched into. So you skip the two stitches and going into the back of the third stitch, you'll pull your yarn in from behind. Again, keeping the top of your uh, chain stitches facing up and do a slip stitch and you're just going to chain three and work your way all the way across in this way. All right, so if everything has worked out well, you should finish off where you have two stitches before your chain two space on each side of your square. And, and if you don't have that, then you've missed a stitch somewhere along here. So you wanna go back and check for that. Or you can, if you're within a stitch either way, you can um, just carry on. Uh, but you should have two stitches and your chain two space. So I'll just do a chain three and turn my work. And, um, and you wanna make sure that this yarn is always on the top side of your work. You've probably run into that already. And so you're going to join into your chain two space in the same way, just grabbing your yarn from behind and snugging it up and do a slip stitch. And keep that sort of down because we're going to be bringing a, another stitch into that corner. So there's the slip stitch and then chain three, turn your work, pull your hook off, and, and then going into that chain two space and bringing the yarn in from behind and creating a slip stitch. And it may seem like you'll be done here, but we're going to finish in the same way that we started here, where we actually have two chains 
uh, two rows of chains going into the corners. So do one more set. So chain three and turn your work and you'll finish this. Uh, just sort of snug that down towards the center of the square. And you'll bring that back down. Oh, sorry, I'm kind of muddled here. Um, come back down into that chain two space again and join on with a slip stitch and just snug that up and keeping this work all nice and, and uh, snug. And then you're just going to fasten off. So just cut, uh, cut a little tail end enough to darn in, pull that out, snug that up. And there you go. And then you just want to darn your tail ends into the back of your work. And that is how you can join the squares together with that freeform Irish crochet stitch. And it's just a really nice kind of lacy way to join the squares together and it uh, matches the pattern of the squares. So go ahead and join all your squares together in that same way. And then when we come back, we'll do a final border around the outside edge. Welcome back. So you can see here that I've joined all the squares together using this lacy stitch. And I ended up doing my squares in a slightly different order because I got it backwards when I started to join them. So this is the square I started with and then this with the pink along the outside and then the red on the outside and then the tangerine on the outside and then the black currant on the outside. And then I just repeated that one more time. So this scarf ended up being 72 inches in length. And so if you decide to use a different joining technique, this is giving you about an extra inch per square. So you may wanna add another square or two to get the scarf to the length that you like. So now we're just going to do a really simple finish around the outside to finish off the border and of course this looks quite nice the way it is and you don't even really have to do a border finish you could just leave it like this if you like but I'm going to show you a nice simple way. All right so carrying on with the mod blue just create a slip knot and we're going to join on with a single crochet so going into any corner any outside corner into the chain two space and so just grab your yarn from behind flip your tail over and do a single crochet and then chain four and sort of push your work over and do a single crochet back into that chain chain two space and then chain four and then skip four stitches and into the fifth stitch going under both loops you'll do a single crochet and oh, the ply is getting a little stuck there there we go chain four skip four and into the fifth stitch do a single crochet and then chain four and I'll just speed this up a bit skip four do a single crochet into the fifth stitch and just work your way along the square until you come up to um, the the join here of the two squares so if your stitch count is correct, you'll come up to this intersection here and you'll have four stitches and then your chain two space. So you'll chain four and you'll do a single crochet into that chain two space. And then chain four and go over to the next chain two space and do a single crochet there. And then chain four, skip four stitches, 
and into the fifth stitch do your single crochet. So you're just going to do that all the way around and you see it's just going to create this really nice little simple border and you get to the corner you're going to go around each corner in uh, the same way here here I'll just bring go over to this corner here so you'll come into this corner with a single crochet and then you'll chain four another single crochet and then chain four and go into your fifth stitch and uh, just work your way around and I'll see you at the other side welcome back so I've come all the way around and you'll do a chain four and I actually finished it and forgot to videotape it so I've already cut my my tail so just coming out of your last single crochet chain four and you'll skip your four stitches and then you'll join into uh, that that beginning single crochet with a slip stitch and just pull that through like that pull the yarn through and fasten off and then you'll just darn in your tail ends and that is all done and I just wanted to note as well when you're crocheting around the border it's possible that when you come into your chain two space here that you you may only have three stitches before you get into the corner and that could be uh, because you've miscounted a stitch um, especially when you come out of this chain two corner if that first stitch is a little bit tight you might not count that first stitch and then you may start counting at the second stitch and if that happens it's totally up to you you can unravel and start again or you can just have three stitches before you go into the corner because um, this border stitch is quite forgiving and so you know it's totally up to you so there you go you can see how lovely that looks I'll zoom out a bit here and of course I can't get this all in the camera uh, but you can see how nice that looks and it's just a very simple kind of lacy border now the manufacturer's instructions for washing this cotton yarn is to wash it in cold water and to wash colors separately because some colors can run so the likely colors to run will be the darker colors the purple and the red so you could do a little test of the yarn and try washing the yarn and see if the colors run at all and if they do then you probably are just going to want to uh, either dry clean this or just hand steam it and I, I block all my crochet using this hand steamer and it's it's really lovely so you'd be able to use that for sure and the other thing is if you do hand wash it wash it in cold water with a little bit of vinegar and or salt and that helps to set the colors of yarn I haven't tried washing this yarn so I'm not sure if it actually does run or not but you can experiment with that and see what happens and so I'm going to darn in my tail ends and I'll give this a little steam and come back for a final reveal welcome back so it's all done and I've given it a nice little steaming press with my hand steamer and that works really well and so it's hard to get the whole scarf in the camera but you can see here how it's all joined together and how these colors work so nicely together and so it's just 10 squares all together and and the cotton yarn is um, really nice for a fall scarf because the cotton yarn is not super warm although it is surprisingly warm and I really love this join here because this matches so nicely with the pattern of the squares and it works really really well together and I think this would work really nice with a denim jacket or a, a nice uh, neutral outfit so I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my YouTube channel for more creative and inspiring videos. Thank you for joining me.